you very much. Can you hear me? Yeah. Good. That's a start. Um, I'm going to stand up. Do you mind? Even when I'm sitting down, I'm roughly the same height, so it doesn't make a great deal of difference. Um, uh, uh, no, that was part of the introduction. Thank you. Um, I, I, I'm afraid I'm going to have to shoot off uh, to catch a train at uh, 10 to 2. And if I don't get it, I'm in trouble. So if we, we end a bit abruptly, my apologies. Because I like to talk as well. That's the other problem. Now, um, let's start here. You know, the problem about China is that it's going to absolutely change the world. And we are, in this country and in our continent, phenomenally ignorant about it. Worse than most of the rest of the world, I have to say. Now, these are Goldman Sachs figures in 2005. And uh, what do you need to know? 2025, the Chinese economy is almost the same size as the American economy. At the moment, it's just over one third of the size. 2050, which is obviously somewhere ahead. But you know, these, you've got to take these figures seriously. Uh, China will be almost twice the size of the United States, India the same size as China. And what these figures show us is the extraordinary speed with which the world is changing, which we do not grasp. And the reason it's changing so quickly is because, one, China's got a population of 1.3 billion, and secondly, because it is growing at roughly 10% a year and has been for 30 years. And the difficulty we have is even knowing vaguely that what, this is, what is happening in the world and we are operating sort of in a different time zone in terms of our understanding of this. So this is the first problem. We're just behind the times. The second problem I think is more serious in a way. And that is how to understand China, how to make sense of it. There is an overwhelming assumption in the West, certainly in this country, that China somehow or other will end up like us. That we're really the only show in town. That there is only one form of modernity and it is a Western modernity. Now this is very arrogant and also very ignorant because the assumption is that as countries like China and India and wherever you want to mention outside the West change, modernize, the assumption is that uh, the process of modernization is purely a question of markets, competition, technology. But it's not. The process of modernization is shaped equally by history and culture. And anyone who knows anything about China knows that this is a profoundly different society with a fascinating and deep history. Now, mainly what I want to talk about tonight is China as difference. Because until we get that clear in our minds, we can't make sense of China. We just keep getting it wrong. Do you know, the consistency with which Western experts get China wrong is extraordinary. Is absolutely extraordinary. Virtually every, you know, some latest person talks about economic breakdown or political breakdown. It hasn't happened. And it is not going to happen in that simplistic kind of way that people talk about. Now, there are four key concepts that I, as building blocks to understanding China, I want to talk about. There are other ones as well. But these are the ones I want to talk about. This is the first. China's a nation state. Well, at least it's called itself a nation state for about 100 years, since the end of the 19th century. Now, of course, anyone who knows anything about China knows that it's not 100 years old. I mean, in terms of a continuing, continuously existing, relatively centralized polity, 
it starts roughly here, although the Chinese will talk about 5,000 years of history. But 221 BC, the victory of the Qin dynasty, the creation of the Qin Empire, and you can already see it beginning to occupy the frontiers of modern China in terms of this part of China, the eastern part of China, where the vast majority of people live. This side was a much later conquest by the Qing dynasty in the 17th century, where, which is very, very lightly populated and includes, of course, Xinjiang and Tibet. Now, it only lasted 13 years, this dynasty, and was succeeded by the Han still over 2,000 years ago. And now you can see very clearly that the Han uh, Empire is not that far short of modern central and eastern China. And the important thing then is that China is only recently and marginally a nation state. For 2,000 years, it wasn't a nation state. It was essentially a civilization state. And the Chinese sense of who they are, of what China is, of what it means to be Chinese, is not derived from the last 100 years of being a nation state. It is derived from that sense of civilizational identity. What am I talking about? Confucian values, very, very unusual conception of the state and its relationship to society. Likewise, very unique concept of the family, or very unusual concept of the family. Um, uh, Customs like uh, Guangxi, of course, an ideographic language where you have a common, uh, a common, basically a common script, but many different languages operating to the same uh, written uh, language. So, China's sense of who, what it is is a civilization sense, not a national sense. This is so different from the West. I mean, basically. For the United States, the conception of what America is, of course, is 100%, virtually, virtually wholly a function of being a nation state and the nation state period. For Europe, it's not so total, but by and large for Britain, for France, for Germany and so on, their conception of what they are and who they are for us is a function of our nation state period. And this is not true uh, in the Chinese case. So when I talk about China being a civilization state, what do I mean? Three elements. One, that it has this extraordinary longevity. Secondly, very unusually, there's a coincidence of state as polity and uh, the, civilizational, the civilizational history and civilizational roots. And the third element Sorry. Uh. Oh. Ah. ah, we have the progress. <laughs> now, here we have um, the, the third element, okay, of China being a civilization state. This is a huge country, both demographically and geographically. These four provinces here have between them, colored blue, have a population larger than that of the United States. The Nine provinces covered either green or blue have a population larger than that of, or as large as that as France or the UK. In terms of geographical size, more or less the same as the United States, four times the population of the United States. And great diversity in terms of living standards. And of course, it's a much more diverse country than Europe is a continent, in fact. Um, and that diversity is both uh, socioeconomic, cultural, and also uh, political. We tend to think of China as somehow being highly centralized, partly associated with the communist period, partly associated with what is compared with India, for example, a very strong sense of Chinese identity. But we should never allow this to, to lead us to a view that China is monolithic or homogeneous. It is not. It is not.